All right, so I hope that you're excited as I am for the, all those cool real-time usage of ray tracing in games. Now let's look at uh, the possibility of in implementing light transport simulation algorithm like path tracing in your game engine, and what, what is the benefit of that? So we all know that path, trace, uh, path tracing gets you the unbiased results, the solution for the rendering equation, but they use hundreds to thousands of sample per pixel. And reuse the, uh, <clears throat> so although this is still too slow for real-time usage, but having a path tracer in your rendering engine is actually extreme, ex extremely powerful since you will have the ability to quickly generate reference screenshots and then you can compare your existing renderers to the reference screenshots and, uh, and, and adjust your rendering accordingly. And this is really useful and, and powerful, especially when your engine already uses physically based shading and lighting since given the same amount of input, the scene definition they, they use the same unit, so th in theory, they should output a similar look. Uh, so it is, it is also pretty useful for tuning and validating rendering algorithms. For example, it tells you your fa whether your fast stochastic SSR is giving you the correct look in terms of you know, contact hardening when comparing to a pass tracer. It also tells you whether your image-based lighting solution is giving you the correct look in terms of perceived roughness or brightness or whether your analytical light sh area light shading solution is giving, getting you the correct results. And in fact, we have actually prototyped uh, path tracing in our UFO integration, and it served us well when, de when developing those denoising algorithms that you saw earlier. So building a path tracer in a game engine today is easier than ever before, because you know, writing a path tracer that is fast on modern GPU has no, always been a challenging task. But now with the powerful programming model provide by, provided by DXR, and the optimized implementation of acceleration structure build, rate traversal, and scheduling by RTX, they handles a lot of these challenging things for you. And hopefully developers can now just focus on the uh, light transport and algorithm side of things. And we don't have to reuse, uh, we, we don't even have to reuse separate code paths for them anymore. In fact, we can, all the HLSL shading code and the resource bindings can be reused. And finally, again, with physically based shading that's already commonly used in game engines, definitely make building a path tracer on top of a game engine easy because all the important sampling of the light source and of the, all, all the BRDF are already known. They're pretty standard, so we just, and they're not that hard to implement either. So, uh, so we have, again, we have a prototype reference path tracer in our U4 integration as a proof of concept, so it's not really at production quality yet. And how we did that, the process is pretty simple. Basically, we, we just added a new ray generation shader that runs the path tracing loop logic. And then we simplify the base pass material shader in UE4 to not do any lighting, but, but just output all the material information that's needed for the pass tracer to do additional pass scattering. And this material information are passed back to the, the pass tracing regenerator shader via payloads. And this way, actually, all the material graph that's in UE4, we're, we can just directly reuse them. So it's pretty, really convenient. And finally, we also added the important sampling on UE4 shading model, which is quite similar to Disney's principal BRDF, so it's also pretty standard. We also added important sampling of existing UE4 light pipes, which is just spherical light source, directional lights, and rectangular lights. And uh, for the purpose of doing direct lighting multiple important sampling, we actually have to add analytical ray light intersection so that our rays can intersect with spherical lights analytically and then you know, c calculate MIS accordingly. And finally, we also added the light calling to make sampling from multiple light source more efficient. And we all know that pass tracing converges very slowly, and even for non-real-time uses, we still like to wait less. So that's why we also hooked up our UE4 pass tracer with, our, with the deep learning-based denoiser that we're currently shipping in Optics 5 to accelerate the convergence. The denoiser used deep learning neural network to, to process the image, and unlike our real-time ones, it takes input with more, more than one sample per pixel, but it can produce results that is really close to ground truth. And just to quantify a bit, it improves the image with 0.8 SSIM to 0.99 SSIM compared to the reference ground truth image. It, it, leverages the, the, it leverages the tensor core that we have in Volta GPUs. So in our U4 integration, we can actually preview the results in real time really fast. Uh, so in the demo that we showed earlier, we're going to blend smoothly between the noisy image to the denoise image. So you just feel like the convergence is really fast. All right, let's show the path tracing one then. Oh, yeah, we're, we're, we're running live. <laughs> 